Welcome back everyone to another training week. Today you're watching the week of January 16th. And at the end of this week, we had the first National 360 camp of the year. Uh, so with World, coming, World Cups coming up, I thought it would be a really good opportunity to put myself under pressure and salute a few routines in front of uh, more people. Uh, in this case, it was some of the best gymnasts in the country. So that's, uh, that's only gonna increase the vibe. So the way I structured my week was to do my usual Monday pre-comp Tuesday routine. But then instead of doing the routines again on the Friday, take an extra light day and shoot for routines on the Saturday in front of the crowd. Uh, apologies, I did make a mistake uh, last week. I said I did my first high bar routine, but it was this week where I went through my first high bar routine from start to finish from the casino. I think there's a question coming up shortly. Mara says we're not uh, we're not the girl this day. Everything looked really far away. I think this is when I was uh, coming back after getting lost from the tap, so I didn't quite know where I was. So the question uh, was from Royal Dunkers, and it was about connecting Gaylord type elements. And when I saw this, I was really excited because uh, if you look in the bottom left corner, I have actually played with connecting Gaylords before. Um, and I guess a quick explanation of uh, what I was doing there was doing the first Gaylord from the traditional Jaeger-like tap or a Ye late Jaeger tap to get over the bar and doing the second Gaylord like a dismount over the high bar. Uh, th those of you that, that have watched gymnastics for, for a long time, you'll know that some athletes or some gymnasts that don't like doing backwards dismounts the, the usual way, they will learn the double front over the bar where you just pop your shoulders over, give the bar a bounce and do your front flip over the bar. And it reminds me of Carl Mieter's uh, layout Gaylord. Carl Mieter did Maras and he did layout Gaylord from the that dismount tap, which was uh, extremely innovative. And I think Carl uh, gave me a couple of pointers on the, on the Maras just a few weeks ago. So here is my first routine of 2023. I did say in the um, weekly focus that there were some tweaks and difficulty. So this is the first week where, actually no, I think I kept the peach to support in on P-bars this week. And it was the following week where I started doing my P-bar routine without the peach to support for a 15.8 start value. And this high bar, I'm not sure exactly what the start value is, but we can calculate it real quick. Tessina seven, Coleman 12, uh, Pike Catcher 15, Straddle Catcher 18, Stelda 20, One Arm Giant 22, Quast 25, Zoliman 26, 27, 28, Counting at A29, D Dismount, double F4, 33. So it's only a 15.3 but it's a 15.3 that I think I can do clean. Like I said last week, if the Casina and Coleman uh, are on the bar, then the rest of the routine is, is fairly uh, consistent. Slow mowing for the, for the knees there so I can see, and so you can see how straight my knees are. I think they're a little bit bent. On this day, the giant Diamondoffs were pretty whack. I still didn't feel my, my normal self, uh, especially in the routine you'll see I made, I made a hell of a save. I don't know how I made it. Yeah, so I'm still experimenting with doing the peach to support there. And I think it was sometime this week that Lockie Ferrado suggested to take the peach out altogether. Here comes a routine attempt. Let's see how I went. 
fun always takes a while to get back into, usually two weeks or so before I'm swinging to handstand out of it. A bit of bent arms there, probably a three and another one or maybe a three for the wobble. So check this out. I don't even know how to describe what happened there. It looked like I was collapsing on one arm, but I put my, my hand on, my right hand on at about three quarter way th through the skill. And that let me save it. So if you can imagine there at a World Cup doing your outset to see all the all the people looking at you from down below and then everybody up in the stands, it's a little bit intimidating, awkward. So I think I'll just I'll just do the I'll count the A for the qualifications, and if I hit clean and I make a final, I'll put that Makuts back in. So I gotta make sure I, I continue training it. I've been doing it uh, in halves, so just a diameter off three quarter part and a three quarter heely, but uh, I haven't done many reps with the full Makuts. That one was better. There's something about keeping uh, keeping straight that, that I always make mistakes on. I'll feel, I'll sense that I'm straight during the giant D-arm, but I either have like a bit of an angle or, or my back will be a bit squiggly. But I notice when I can keep a really solid line throughout the whole 360, more often than not, I get put into a nice handstand at the end of the skill. Pommel horse, pommel horse. Oh, it's always it's always fun coming back on pommel horse. Not being able to do a single skill with without having to struggle. So that there is planned. I'm not actually trying to get onto the onto the single pommel. I'm trying to see whether I can put my my hand on it properly before I actually go in fully for the magia. So it's a really, really slow comeback to horse for me. But if I start now, hopefully by the time season comes around in a couple months, I'll have my Magia Savado routine back. You can see I've started doing uh, more of my floor tumbles, doing my whip two and a half again, starting to work the one and a half down the side and building a bit more height onto the mat uh, for my double front and double back to, to give myself a bit of an in-between step from doing it on the soft resi to doing it over something slightly higher than the floor. It looks like I'm doing a, a pit fit. So we have something called a pit fit here where we go into that resi pit and we literally just do all of our tumbles running back and forth into the pit and usually we'll do an extra dismount but you can see i'm not quite in good shape yet so i had to i had to water down my dismount and my extra was just the front layout from punch now the rings game of the season is going to be can i get a backer prize to invert cross paid meaning can i get it counted i think the rules are if your shoulders go above the top of the ring it's automatically not paid so I'm, I'm still a ways off but uh if i could get it counted i'd be pretty stoked it is a e so let's say you get in your point three for point three for coming in too high probably a point one for for the shape because i don't think i can be that arched well i'm still winning point one and point one is gains fam Every point one counts, right? Yeah, that full in, that full in uh, is very uncomfortable. The reason I'm maintaining the full in is because double-double goes through a full in. 
but sometimes I think I'm better off just going for the double double because uh, I don't go skew during a double double for some reason. My set must be a little bit cleaner. But whenever I do fall in, I rush the twist uh, faster. So I end up going a little bit off axis in the air. But I don't want to do double double because, you know, if you, you go a bit off, it's a little bit dangerous. And the last thing I want right now is to hurt myself on something that I'm not even competing. There you go. It looks like this day I stayed a bit straighter in the giant uh, Diamirov. Makes me wonder who did it first. You know, some skills they have names, other skills that they, they don't have, they don't have names. Like Pagan has a name, Maris has a name, but Ordinary Pike Gaylord doesn't have one. Who did it first? We'll never know. If you do know, can you please jot it down in the comments because I am really curious. Same as Kovacs. I guess we don't know who did Pike to Kovacs first. Layout Kovacs isn't named. There must be, must be a lot of skills that are still it's still, it's still a mystery. Who actually did it? Can I do the peach? Yes. Looks like I'm still doing the peach here. I wonder if I did it uh, at camp. And of course, shout out to Abel, who I saw at uh, at the camp, Abel's looking really good. Came up from my favorite city in the Mount, Tauranga. It was good to see you, Abel. Yeah, I guess looking at camp, we need a uh, we need more seniors in the country. There's only a handful of us seniors, so it's uh, not to say it's lonely, but you know the vibes would be even better if uh, you know if there, if there was more numbers in the seniors. You see, uh, you see national camps in Japan, and they have like a gym full of like 30, 30 people who. <laughs> who are all doing world-class gymnastics. Like I said, uh, when I looked at the results from All Japan Event Finals, there was Suk triple twist, or, or at least five, six start values going all the way down into 90th place. I can't even imagine having 90 guys in the country, not only training, but uh, competing, competing uh, a five, six volt. There were some five twos and I remember there was one 14.8. So there were some two and a halfs in there as well. But most of them were five sixes. So that's either handspring two and a half, handspring double front half. I'm assuming the majority would have been soup triple twists. How did this one look? That one was a smidge bent. All right, I'm gonna give my memory uh, a wipe because my phone needs a... Oh, that was a good tap. BRB. That was a good set of flares. Yeah, so where I'm holding it there was pretty much top of the ring. I reckon it was slightly above. So, we're still holding it at a place where it's not gonna be counted. Plus remember, if I'm doing a backer prize into it, I'll backer prize slightly higher than where I'm gonna hold. So it still needs a lot of work. You know, I didn't do any crosses in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the chest is, is definitely affected by some cross training. So staying away from that, but it is getting better. I came back to doing Honma in my routine just the, uh, the other day. Now you see the Marises were really far again, so I must have still been a little bit cautious after after that week of confusion in the taps. To be honest, it looks like I'm still confused, so keeping it on the on the careful side, but I don't want to not train it, so. 
All right, day one of camp. I would have done a, a couple of Marises again for maintenance and in the back of my head, hoping that the, the extra energy would have let me catch. And I did not catch. Warm up sequence. Now remember I had a ton of adrenaline. So we had all of our seniors, we had a couple of 360 seniors, and then we had all of the, the uh, junior 360 members. And even though they're just kids for the most part, like that thing was like half a meter away from the bar. I felt like I did the exact same thing. So it's always good to put yourself under that pressure because when the adrenaline hits different, everything is different. So here we go. Pretty close. I took a risk sending it that close, but it paid off and I still managed to join out of it pretty nice. Those knees are looking pretty squeezed up on the catch ifs. That quast, though, I need to be careful with that quast. Thinking of Coppice World Cup uh, last year, that's where. That's where I got smashed besides the dismount. Zoli Min needs to be a bit more turned around. And the knees over here, look at that, that's a 0.3 easy. 0.3 bent. Good thing is I didn't pike down very much, probably just a 0.1. Chest was up on the landing. So after seeing that, uh, I made myself one go. My next uh, routine day was Tuesday and on Tuesday, our World Cup coach, the coach that's taking us to the World Cups, came up from uh, down south, David Colvin. So we, me and Sam and I were gonna show him where we, uh, where we are at in terms of our routine preparation. So I gave myself one goal, one goal only, to keep my knees as locked as I possibly can on the dismount. Did it happen? You'll have to see that next week. So looks like I just did a P-bar routine and, and I would have done a few more things. The camp went from Saturday all the way to Tuesday. So we did train on Sunday where I decided to do a couple vaults. And you'll see me even vault on a, on a slightly harder mat in the pit. Let's see how the routine went and then, then I'll call it there. Bit of bent arms in the catch. Wobble. There we go, that was smooth. Couple of shuffles, point one and a point one, couple more. I think I really wanted to just get through this routine. But that giant D arm was, uh, was really good. Catch angle was good. There was no shoulder angle. Now which routine did I opt for? Did I do the B peach or did I do, I think I did the dismount, there we go. So that's gonna be the World Cup routine that I'm gonna do in the qualifications. I think it flows much better. I'm pretty excited about it. So uh, thank you Lucky once again for your suggestion. All right, oh, you're about to see me land a new tumble. You've seen me go for it, but I've never actually landed it, so. Enjoy the, the rest of the video and there it is, until next time.